Hey guys, before we get in the video, I really quickly want to talk about my Patreon page, which is linked down in the description below. Patreon is an awesome way for you to support me as a content creator, so I can create higher quality content more often, for as little as $1 a month. You're also able to receive some pretty awesome rewards in the process. For example, shout out on Instagram, priority ride in a GTR if you see me at a meet, extra entries into my giveaways, and more. So if you want to help support me as a content creator and also support my future build, be sure to click the link down in the description below and check it out. Now enjoy the video. Alright guys, it's a beautiful day in Houston. It's a little overcast, but overall the temperature is nice. And so I've been working from home all day. I want to go out on my lunch break and just do a little bit of driving, take you guys with me. And then as you can tell by the title, I have a little bit of bad news uh, about myself and my car that I need, need to talk about. But first, a cold start, then a little bit of driving, and then we'll talk. Alright, so she is dirty as all hell. I haven't washed her in quite some time, a couple weeks, even more than that. It's rained and I've taken her on some pretty long cruises, so she's quite dirty. But on the plus side, we do have a new windshield. They're already, th this is not a crack, this is some bird shit that I need to clean off. But it is a new windshield that doesn't have any rock chips in it at all. They also uh, put, on, put in new uh, windshield wipers, which is kind of cool. And then the uh, right rear turn signal has been replaced. It cost $5 to replace, so that has been replaced. However, a little bit of bad news. Uh, this is not related to what I'm about to tell you guys later, but when they were replacing the windshield, they did end up cracking right here. So as you can tell, this is entirely broken. It's broken from here all the way across. Uh, Safe Flight is ordering the part right now, or they ordered it yesterday to fix this because it's under their insurance, it's their liability. They broke this, they need to fix it. It's pretty common from what I hear when you're replacing the windshield on a GTR. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. The only thing that I'm possibly worried about is, so the black goes across here and then this is paint. There is a little bit of blue that it ha broke off right there. So I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna work for the repair. But yeah, it doesn't look fantastic, but I hope, I hope they're able to fix all of that soon because I, I want that replaced before I go driving too hard. I mean, I'm, I, I've barely been driving at all, but you know how it is. too bad of a cold start not it, it struggled a little bit to start up as it usually does but the engine's pretty cold right now it's on e, purely e85 so that's why it you know struggled there but that actually wasn't too loud so not too bad but the reason why my car is so dirty and why i haven't cleaned it is i've, I've never purchased the cleaning supplies for the car because i set up a sweet deal with the local car wash over here called car spa where basically i pay 60 bucks a month and i get unlimited interior and exterior washes not a detailing but they do a hand wash on the outside they hand wash the inside uh they do well they clean the inside pretty well and it's it's well worth 60 bucks a month so that way i don't have to pay for supplies i don't have to waste a lot of time doing that i can literally just drop it off for them to do it but they're shut down right now so i can't do that so i got to figure out a way to get my car washed in the interim until they are actually reopened.
story related to the bird shit that's on my windshield. The reason why I haven't cleaned that off is because there was a, a two day requirement where I can't wash the car, which uh, is officially up today. And so I, I was worried about getting water somewhere where I shouldn't if I tried to wash that off. So I actually will have to wash that bird shit off my windshield when I get back to my apartment, but that's the reason I haven't done it yet. A bird decided to wait until right after I get my windshield replaced to shit on the windshield. So thanks, asshole. That was a lot of fun. Okay, so I found this spot before. This is actually, oh no, there's a funeral going on. Oh, that's sad. Oh, because they, they can't have more than 10 people there. Oh, that's really sad. Or not a, sorry, not a funeral, a, a burial service. But basically, I found this church right here. This First Baptist Church. This is actually where I recorded the video where I talked about my current and future plans for the, uh, my current mods and future plans for the car because I found this like little empty parking lot where I could get out and talk about the car without worrying about it, like bothering people or anything. So, you know, completely wide open. It was wide open before the virus and then right now it looks like it's still completely wide open. But this should serve as a good spot to, uh, to park and uh, talk for what I need to do here. <sighs> okay, let's talk. All right, so the reason why I'm currently living here in Houston is because once I graduated college, well, actually right before I graduated college, I accepted a job offer to join a rotational program uh, called the Financial Financial Development Program for the company Precision Cast Parts. I had done a couple intern internships with them, so I loved working with them, and I was really happy to accept it. And so the way that it worked was it would be a two-year program where they would choose a location before you even graduated college where they, uh, they would send you for a year and then they would send you somewhere else for a second year and then you would basically graduate the program and you would be able to select what you want to do whether that's take a position where you're at at a different location within the company or some people leave the company and just use that as a jumping off point for their career all are great options so I found out I was being moved to Philadelphia right before I graduated and so the first year after I graduated I was living in Philadelphia and then after that they moved me down to Houston and so now Coming up in July is the end of my rotation here. And so that's when I have to make a decision about where I want to move. Throughout the entire program, I've really loved Portland and I really love my time in Philadelphia. And then when I got down here, I really loved my time here. And so essentially I was kind of looking at, at those three locations as the places where I wanted to go. I do want to stay with the company because this the company is really great and they, they have definitely treated me very well. So I was looking to either stay here in Houston, move back to to Philly or move back to Portland. And I was really leaning towards Houston as of right now, because honestly, with all things considered, this is probably the place that I've been happiest, just simply because the people here are phenomenal, both at work and in the community, like in the car community and elsewhere. The car scene here is awesome. I feel like there's a really good culture around driving fast, but not doing too much of stupid shit. And overall, I've just, I've really enjoyed my time here more than I did in Philadelphia. And then more than I did the first 23 years of my life in Portland. And so I, the way that I would rank it is I was looking to go to Houston most first and then probably Philadelphia and then probably Portland. The good thing about Portland being that there's actually three facilities there where there's only one in, well, there's two in Philadelphia technically, but one of them is Morgantown, which is a, a ways west and I'm not really interested in that one. And then down here in Houston, there's only the, the one. So I've made a lot of really awesome friends here and I was really looking forward to, or really looking to, to try to stay here, assuming that a position was available. And so we just started the process of interviewing. I interviewed last Tuesday through the phone with the Jenkintown facility, the Philadelphia facility. And I felt like that re went really well. And there's currently some restructuring happening at the Portland facilities. And so I was told that I probably won't hear back until next week, simply because they do have something major going on that they're trying to deal with first before they reach out to me, which is totally fine. I, I completely understand that. And then I reached out to the Houston facility and I didn't really hear back. So I sent out a follow-up email this morning and g probably 45 minutes later, I get a call on my work phone from the head of HR, well, the head of HR at the facility here, not for the division, uh, named Stu. Stu's a great guy. And basically what he told me 
is that there isn't a position here in Houston because they're currently going through some cutting of positions and with cutting positions, they're not able to then create a position. They're looking to reduce heads and not increase them. And so he was trying his absolute hardest. He said they really wanted to keep me here, but they're just not able to come up with a position. To, they're not able to create a position right now for me. And so as a result, Houston can't be one of my options for July. The bad news being that what that means is unless a, a, an amazing job jumps out at me between here and then, I will have to move from Houston. And so then I'm starting to lean more towards Jenkintown. But the problem there is that I'm in competition with someone else who's currently in the same program as me, but located at Philly, which will give him a leg up the fact that he's currently there versus having to move me out there. And so really I've made a lot of amazing friends here, but it's looking like I'm going to have to move in July. And so I'm either gonna have to move to Philadelphia or to Oregon. And both of those contain bad and good news in and of themselves which I'm gonna go into a little bit of it, but not too much. But that also means some bad news for the car. So one of the things that I really like about Houston is Houston seems really relaxed about car mods, especially what would be considered illegal car mods. For example, my car is straight pipe. I've only heard of one situation where someone got pulled over and ticketed for their loud exhaust. And it was one of those situations where the officer was being picky, probably because there was a lot of racing and stuff going on. And so they were trying to hand out tickets for any reason they deemed necessary. But most of the time that doesn't happen. However, in Philadelphia, it does happen from time to time. The area that I lived in before, it, it was kind of a crime riddled area. And so as a result, the cops were more focused on actual crimes and not illegal car mods. But if I move back there, I would probably have to move back to a nicer area. And that's where you definitely deal with a lot of the issues where they do care about illegal car mods like your loud exhaust. And Portland, 100%, they give a shit about illegal car mods. In fact, Portland would be the worst location for this car because I would have to absolutely change the exhaust, otherwise I would risk having an issue. I would absolutely have to bolt a front plate on, on, the, on the car, otherwise I would have a legal issue. And I would have to remove the cold air intakes because they those are illegal in Portland and they will check for them. So essentially there's a bunch of shit I'd have to change about the car in order to be legal there. I would probably try my luck for a little bit, but the way Oregon cops are, at least in the area that I lived in, they would absolutely pull me over pretty damn quick and they would absolutely check for all that shit and make give me a ticket and force me to fix it. So that's the bad news is that it, if I move, I'm likely gonna have to make some changes to the car. There is some good news to that in that essentially if I do move back to Portland, my parents built a house in Central Oregon, in Bend, Oregon, and that's kind of where they're hoping to spend most of their time. As a result, they offered that I could live at their Portland house, which is like 15 minutes from the facilities there. Perfect distance. It's where I grew up. Grew up. It's where I spent all my time from fifth grade and on. And so they said I would be able to live there for like really cheap. So the cost of living is higher there. As a result, salaries are then higher to compensate for the higher cost of living, but I wouldn't have to pay much rent. I would be able to save quite a bit of money in that regard, which would be awesome. And that way, that way I would be able to save up quite a bit more money. And so then I could hopefully put quite a bit more money into this car. So as I mentioned in the video recorded here about the, my future plans, I'm looking to do basically one major mod per calendar year. And so for 2020, I'm looking to, depending on financial situation, do an aftermarket cold or aftermarket intercooler and potentially doing a transmission rebuild, which would, that would be a huge step, but that just depends on financial situation and how things go. But if I do move back to Portland, then I would be able to save a lot of money per month on rent and other uh, other similar cost of living issues. Plus my salary would be bumped up a little bit versus here in Houston where the cost of living is lower. And so I would be able to save more money every month, which could go back into this car, would also help me save for a uh, down payment on a house. One thing I would even potentially consider doing is saving up enough money to eventually buy that house from my parents. Cause I really like that house. I really like where it's located. So that's always a possibility too. Holy crap it's getting really hot in the car sorry I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sweat but it is a beautiful day out i mean it feels it feels incredible but yeah so that's that's essentially the bad news i i've really had a lot of fun here and as of right now the largest percentage of my audience comes from houston 
and the second biggest coming from Philadelphia because those are the two locations where I've had my car. And so that's a lot of people that are wanting to see my car, wanting to see me, wanting me to go to meets and stuff like that, which also reminds me of another downside of Philadelphia and Portland. Philadelphia has a car scene. It's decent, but it's nothing like what it is here. I mean, I, I wasn't hearing about car meets all that often when I was living in Philly, and a decent amount of the car meets that I was hearing about were 35, 40 plus minutes away from where I live, which that's not fun. I, I really don't like driving super far to car meets very often. And then in Portland, from what I've seen, there is basically a very weak car scene compared to Philadelphia and Houston. Houston. And so if I did move back to Portland, there would I wouldn't be able to go to car meets very often. I I would have to drive down to like California, which I do not want to drive my car anywhere near California in order to make content, in order to network and get my car out there. So it, it, it's really a bummer that I'm I'm basically being forced to leave the area that I really like, that I think would be the best future for myself, for my car, and for my social media. So it is what it is. It's not a complete end of story there because at the time times are tough right now with coronavirus social distancing and everything and so there is a possibility between now and may 15th when i have to make my decision that they are able to come up with a position and that i am able to then stay here in houston but the odds are incredibly small and I wouldn't hope for it. As of right now, I would say there's probably a 95% chance that I'm going to have to move from Houston in July and go probably to Philadelphia or Portland, but it could potentially be elsewhere if the, if I don't get the position in Philly and there's nothing open in Oregon or something along those lines. So in that case, it would I'd probably look at Seattle or Grafton, which is near Boston, as I've heard really good things about those locations and those are both very cool areas. And so that's always a possibility, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I have for you guys. I apologize. Again, I, I, I really wish I didn't have to move. I love it here, absolutely love it here in Houston, but I I have to focus on my career. YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that, It's not it doesn't make me any money at all, and so I'm not able to focus on that. I have to actually focus on my career. My career is the reason why I'm able to afford a car like this at a young age and why I'm looking forward to growing in my career so that way I can build this thing up, I can make this thing well over a thousand horsepower, and then I can get a second car and start working on that and and live the life that I really want to live. So that is how it is for now, guys. The thing that I feel the most bad about is that there's a lot of people who really love seeing my car here and if this coronavirus stuff continues, they might not be able to see my car before I leave. The last time that they saw my car at whatever meet they saw me at, it's the last time they're gonna see my car in person, potentially forever, but most likely for at least quite a few years because if I do move, I'm not gonna be moving back for at least two years, if not more. But I will always be, when I do, when I do move away, I will always be looking for an open position here at the Houston facility because I really do love it here. And I, I do see, if I were to get a position here at the Houston facility, I do see incredible growth because they, they build a development plan around you to try to develop your skills so that you can become a controller as fast as possible and further. So it is what it is. I apologize, but that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And I really hope your coronavirus quarantines are, are going well as, as well as they can be. <sighs> and have a nice day, guys.